Hi, I'm Janet. This is day two of my dry fast and day one of the program here with Dr. Filinoff and his team. Um, I am here because for the last 18 years, I've been suffering with Lyme disease. Um, it started with a bite. I didn't know I'd got Lyme disease until my health went off a cliff 11 and a half years ago. And then I was subsequently tested and had Lyme and various co-infections as well. The most difficult thing to deal with, uh, with the Lyme, it's ravaged my body in many, many ways, but the worst thing to deal with for me has been severe electrosensitivity, which means I can't tolerate wireless, mobile, Bluetooth and any of those signals, which limits my life enormously. So I am keen that dry fasting reverses that so that I can start and have a life again with my family and my friends and do things that normal people do. Um, in preparation for coming here for dry fasting, I made this my New Year's resolution. It's the 28th of March today. On the 1st of January, I started to prepare for this fast. Uh, so I followed the 21 day online program, which was just superb. It missed nothing, it was wonderful. And it was just the perfect way to set myself up for this particular uh, trip. I did within that two detoxes and liver cleanses, which included wet fasts, and I did a three day dry fast, a four day dry fast, a five day dry fast, and a final one day dry fast before arriving here. Um, all felt incredibly difficult. The big difference instantly on being here is being with people who get it, who just get me, who don't question me. I've had 18 years of being questioned. Um, no one is questioning me. It's wonderful. I feel I've really met my tribe. I haven't met anybody here yet who I don't think is utterly glorious. It's just fantastic. And the relief of having Dr. Filanoff and his team take over from me having responsibility for the last 83 days of this is just immense. And I can't say what a relief it is to be here. Even though I don't feel marvellous, I do not feel marvellous, I feel tired and I feel weak. Um, it feels marvellous to be here and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the outcome is. I'm just, I really am genuinely energised by being here, even though I feel very depleted and excited about the outcome. Hi, so today is second day of the programme with Dr. Filanoff, third day of my dry fast. And this is a struggle today. I'm very thirsty, I'm very tired. I feel like there is so much going on in the background in my body and all I can do is rest completely. And I have just spent five and a half blissful hours on the beach, on a sunbed, in my sleeping bag, doing nothing but resting. And that, I have to say, is another advantage I've just realised of being here rather than being at home. Because being at home and dry fasting, life goes on around you and you can't avoid engaging in some of that. There is no way at home that you can lie down in the sunshine for five and a half hours and let your body rest. And that's been so important today. Um, my fasting, my fellow fasters yesterday reminded me that I hadn't said where I was from. I'm from England, I live just outside London. Um, and I also forgot to say how I'd come across Dr. Filanoff's programme and like many others it was through Michelle Slater's work. So I was invited to a webinar by the publication What Doctors Don't Tell You and Michelle was the guest speaker and she was billed as somebody who had recovered completely from Lyme by dry fasting and they wanted £20 for the webinar and I thought, I don't need to spend £20. I'm sure I should have written a book. So I went on Amazon and found the book and it was £20. And I thought, I'm sure I don't need to spend £20 on this. I'm sure I can 
sign up to Audible for free and listen to this book. And so that's what I did. Um, and within a very short space of time, I was spending £20 on the book and £20 on the webinar. And I attended the webinar and it was mind blowing. Michelle was utterly compelling, hugely intelligent, hugely eloquent, and just made me go, that's the answer. That is the answer. Um, and so, yeah, read the book, listened to the audiobook, did the whole thing, and knew, and this was in December, from that moment on, that I was single-mindedly going to do this with nothing getting in the way. And on another occasion, when I'm not quite so dry mouthed, I'm going to explain what I did to single mindedly get here and to just remove any possible obstacle. This is uh, day three of the retreat and day four of my dry fast. I feel a little bit brighter than yesterday, which is good. And um, I am sleeping and sleeping and sleeping, which is wonderful and obviously what my body needs. So I slept all last night. I've just come in from five hours sleep on the beach. I will sleep all night tonight, I've got no doubt. And it just feels like that is what's going to heal me. It's, it's incredible. It's lovely. Um, so I missed this morning's lecture because I was sleeping. Um, but I came in for the massage, which was, um, yeah, pretty extraordinary, actually. Andre is enormous. He's an enormous guy. Um, but boy, does he do a good massage. And it was painful at times. I had a honey massage. I had cupping. And that's largely because the big problem I'm faced with is my chest and my lungs. I arrived here. On the end well having had bronchitis for three weeks and um, that's been difficult so he worked on that a lot this morning um, and it's made a big difference um, I hope he'll work on it again tomorrow so I said that I my mouth wasn't so dry I was going to talk about what I did to be sure of being here well my mouth is still dry but nevertheless I'm going to talk about it so um, three main things. Once I'd made up my mind in December that I was coming here, I was single-minded about it and nothing was getting in my way. So the first thing that I did was to tell my husband and my children that this is what I was doing. And I mean, I told them. Um, I didn't give them the choice. They were all quite alarmed, I have to say. Um, this is drastic um, and they were worried. So my husband immediately launched into questioning me and I said he wasn't allowed to question me until he'd read Michelle's book and then he was allowed to ask me questions which is different from questioning me. Um, and he is amazing and he did exactly that and was very much more on board with it. Doesn't mean he's not still worried, but he has been incredible. From the very start of this program on the 1st of January, I have been weak and incapable of doing my day-to-day -day things. And he's just picked up everything that I couldn't do. He's been extraordinary. And he's supportive of this, albeit a little worried. So that was the first thing that I did. The second thing that I did was literally empty my diary. I have taken every single social engagement out of my diary from the 1st of January to the day that I flew to Montenegro. Everything went because I didn't know how I'd feel and I didn't want to feel that pressure. So I removed everything, thank goodness, because I wasn't up to it. So that was number two. Number three was I was really, really careful who I spoke to about this. And every time I chose to speak to somebody and they were very, very carefully selected, I prefaced it with, you're not allowed to say anything negative about this. I don't want to hear it. So I have told a very select group of friends and I 
pinged that idea from Michelle Slater's book. And the other thing that I pinged from Michelle, unashamedly, because I thought it was a genius idea, was I recruited nine fasting friends. And every day, a different friend is supporting me here. They are fasting at home. They're either doing a water fast or a green juice fast. And I'm in touch with that friend that day. I don't like to use my phone, so I'm not doing lots besides that. But that friend that day for 36 hours is my link to home and my motivator. And um, they are being brilliant. They're being completely brilliant. Um, and I've asked each one of them also for a book recommendation. And I've had a really wonderful mix of books. I'm still only on the first one, but I'm loving it. And um, they mean a lot to me, these people. So I have my brother in South Africa, my sister-in-law in Houston, five good friends in the UK, plus two of my trusty practitioners. And those are my nine fasting friends, and I will forever treasure them. Hi, this is day four of the retreat, day five of my dry fast. <coughs> my big challenge is weakness in my arms and my legs. Just about everything else is fine, bearable. Um, but I'm very, very weak. But um, yesterday's very um, grueling massage has helped the chest. Today I had a great neck massage, which uh, I think will have done some good. And I also was a very brave girl and had a bee sting, which I was set against to start with. But hey, here you go. I did it. Um, when Svetlana asked for volunteers to do these video diaries, I said I would do it, but it might not be pretty. Well. It's not pretty. I've just looked in the mirror. It's not pretty. You're looking at a woman that hasn't bothered with any personal hygiene for the last six days. And I don't care at all. And I don't think anybody else cares either. We've got bigger fish to fry. Um, and it's challenging. I mean, it is hardcore. It is hardcore. Um, but when we all get to the end of this, we will be so incredibly proud of ourselves and it will have made such a difference to us. So let's hope we do. Hi, this is day six of my fast, day five of the retreat. And I'm doing all right, actually. I'm very, very weak. My little legs, it's like being a newborn giraffe. No idea how they do it, but that's how I feel. So my legs are really weak, but I've got great help here. Everywhere I need to go, somebody just goes with me and holds me. But that's amazing. And it means I can carry on, which I'm not sure how I'd do without, with that, without that support, that literal support. So that's great. Um, I've got a great routine going as well. So I get up very slowly in the morning, get dressed very slowly. That takes an age. And then I come to the lecture at 10.30, have a massage of some sort at 12, and then I hit the beach, which sounds very glamorous. But actually, I get in my sleeping bag completely because I'm still feeling the cold a lot. And um, I stay there for the next five hours. I mean... What could be better? Beautiful beach, sunshine, five hours of pure rest. And when I'm resting, I feel amazing. Don't feel like there's anything wrong with me at all. Um, the challenges that I've got are the weakness. And this is a weird one, and it happens every time I fast. Terrible rib pain. Um, and that's hard, it makes it hard to breathe. But besides that, I'm okay. And um, I've been watching every night my fellow fasters doing their daily video diary. And I'm learning a lot from them. The thing I learned last night from them was that it is so important to work on the mental strength. And I don't think I'd been giving that enough attention. 
So I have been giving that some attention now and it does make a difference. So my mental strength has come from them and I am telling myself that I will complete this because I don't have any other options for getting my life back. So that is my motivation and that's what I'm repeating to myself ad nauseum. Hi, this is day six of the retreat and day seven of my dry fast. And um, I've decided, along with the doctor and Svetlana, that I will break the fast tomorrow morning. So I'll have done seven days and not the nine that I'd hoped for, which is disappointing, feels a bit of a failure. I'd prepared really, really well for this fast and thought that that would be enough, but I'm so weak and uh, I don't feel safe. I can't walk without support now and that doesn't seem sensible um, because there are times when I have to. And so I, yeah, I've made that decision. It's the right decision, um, but quite a hard one to commit to having worked so hard at this. But there we are, I'll be back, I'll do another do some more at home and I will get there but this is not the time for me for a nine day fast. Hi it's uh, day nine of the retreat and it is day three of my exit and there's been a little hiatus between the last film that I did and this one because I have been feeling pretty rough, very very tired, very dizzy, I'm now deaf in both ears, which is a, a feature of every time I've fasted, I go deaf, which is very disorienting. Um, just incredibly depleted and weak. So anyway, today is a different day and I am feeling a little bit like I'm maybe turning a corner, still pretty fragile, but you'll be delighted to know that I was strong enough for a shower, which was absolute heaven. Um, and in the night I was awake thinking about various things and the dry fasting experience. I know lots of people have quite emotional times um, during the dry fasting and I haven't. I just haven't. I think I've been too stunned by the whole thing. I've been a bit numb, to be honest. But in the night I was thinking about people who have made such a difference to me during this experience, such a difference and the kindness of complete strangers. And that actually did make me a little bit emotional uh, when I was thinking about it. Um, two people stand out. One is um, the landlord of where I'm staying. I can't be in the hotel um, because of my health conditions and not being able to tolerate wireless. I had never met this man. He had no idea why I was in Montenegro. And he has scooped me up and looked after me like one of his children. He's been incredible. I've never, ever encountered anything like it. Um, and the other one is Daniela, who runs this hotel. And again, I've never met her 10 days ago. And without her, I couldn't have done this. She is just the most extraordinary person. And seriously, without those two people, I would have given up um, much sooner. I know I gave up a little bit earlier than I'd hoped, but extraordinary kindness, completely unexpected and so appreciated that I can't even find the words. And that was my sort of emotional, enlightened moment. Thank you. Today is day 10 um, of the retreat and day four of my exit. I do feel a little bit better today, thank goodness. Um, yesterday was interesting. <clears throat> I was reminded by one of my fellow fasters that um, the exit is a bit like having had surgery. You're coming out of surgery and that was a really good reminder 
I was exhausted and all I wanted to do was rest. And it was just like having had surgery, a general anaesthetic, being in the recovery room, knowing that you're waking up and just desperately wanting to stay asleep. It was that same feeling. Um, so just, a, you know, a, a totally exhausting day. Also very interesting, you know, Dr. Filanoff reminded us that 70% of the success of this whole process is in the exit. And that sounds so simple, but it's not that simple. When you're dry fasting, there is one answer and it's no, you can't do that. You just do nothing. You don't have water, you don't have anything and you can't touch it and you can't rub it on and you can't do anything. That's very straightforward. There's one answer. But when you're exiting, there are so many subtleties. You know, don't do anything that makes you feel too bad. Well, you know, that very variable. So there's a lot of subtlety about the exit and it's very important to get it right. And I think yesterday I made two mistakes. One was to drink um, a strong coffee, which is allowed, but it made me feel absolutely horrific. Um, I didn't need to drink it all. I perhaps should have just had a sip. There we are, lesson learned. And the other one was that I think I spent too much time talking um, at lunchtime. It was lovely because we haven't been able to really talk to people. So it was great, but it was too much. And all of those things contribute to how successful the exit will be. And, um, and you do have to judge for yourself. And, and there is no right answer. And everybody is different. Um, but I did learn two lessons the hard way yesterday. Um, and I won't do that again. And I'm reflecting now on, you know, been here for 10 days with everybody else and how, it, how it's been and how I felt before coming. Honestly, before coming here, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. My legs were jelly. I just felt like a, a complete bag of nerves for several days before leaving because I knew it was going to be a massive thing to do. Didn't know it was going to be this massive. And I don't think I've even had the capacity to start to assimilate what this experience has really been like and, and meant. I think that's going to take quite a long time. It is such a deep dive. I have no idea what I actually think about it. I, I can't say. I haven't got the vocabulary. I haven't got the capacity in my brain currently to to really assess and um, and share my thoughts on it. It's just too massive. Hi, it's uh, day 11 of the retreat today and day five of my exit. And I have turned a bit of a corner. I don't feel marvellous. I feel very wobbly on my legs, still very dizzy, very unsteady. But that has been a feature of each of the shorter dry fasts that I've done previously at home as well. It's just that my legs go and that's ju just what happens for me. Um, so I still feel pretty unsteady, but I don't need help from other people to walk. At least I can cope with walking with a stick for support. So that's a difference. And everything that I had to do this morning, getting up, getting dressed, was a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Um, I'm starting to very slowly function again, which I really wasn't functioning at all. Um, the retreat ends tomorrow, and I suppose that raises the question of what comes next. And the expectation in order for further healing is that more dry fasts will follow. The next dry fast as a group is in October. And so I have to ask my question, myself the question of, whether I'll return to do that. And the logic tells me, yes, <laughs> I will. Um, but it is actually quite um, a daunting prospect. I've spoken to a number of people here who have done several dry fasts um, as a group at home, various different options. And I asked them, was it easier to come back to the group a second and third time? Because they knew what they were expecting and actually they were all very honest and every single one said no, it was harder to come back because they knew exactly what they were expecting. 
and I'm feeling a bit like that. So I have to teach myself not to even think ahead like that and just to live today um, because I think it would be overwhelming to be thinking six or seven months ahead and how that's going to feel and to have that on my brain every day for the next six or seven months will overwhelm me and so I just need to go for one day at a time um, and I don't find that easy I don't find it easy to live like that but that will be the only way that I can contemplate <laughs> more of the same uh, several months from now so that's my plan it's the last day of the retreat and it's the sixth day of my exit from fasting and um, I just want to kind of summarise the fact that it has been um, a hell of a ride. It's been a roller coaster. There have been dips and there have been peaks and there's been a lot of wobbling in between. Um, and there have been lots of light bulb moments. And one of the light bulb moments that I just wanted to pick out was a conversation with Svetlana in which I was asking about some of the um, approaches to the protocol and actually some of the things that weren't done in the protocol that I might have expected. And Svetlana's answer was that that would be Western medicine and we're not doing Western medicine. And that was a real aha moment for me because of course, you know, we've all been trying Western medicine for years and years and it has exhausted us and it's depleted us and it has made matters worse probably and it's exhausted our finances and the only reason we're here is that it didn't work. So why would we continue with Western medicine? There surely has to be um, a value in trying an alternative. And so I think that answered so many questions for me as to you know how I would go on and approach my health henceforth. And I think to you know to go with the Western approach of sticking plaster, patching up potions, pills, and lotions makes very little sense. Um, when we have an alternative where the science stacks up, which we can try at very little expense. And um, so I think the roller coaster ride will continue. I'm buckled up, I'm strapped in, and I'm looking forward to the point where you reach the end of that ride and it comes to a stop and you go, oh my God, I made it, I'm safe, I'm euphoric, I survived, I can get off this ride now and carry on with my life. 